fans of a Horus heresy, tactical dreadnought armour, and arrogance personified. Thank you very much for joining me for an out of the pack review. And it's been a while, hasn't it? We are now in 2021. Gosh, what happened over the last 12 months? Well, anyway, happy belated new year. I hope you boys and girls are all well. Now, things have been a little bit slow in the world of heresy on account of the wider global and local situation. But today, I am going to shine a, well, not a ray of sunlight, but perhaps a spooky moonbeam into your day to cheer you up. And that's because we are going to be unboxing the latest release from Forge World's Horus Heresy range. And that is none other than these guys here. And this is the Night Lords Contekar Terminator Elite. And this is a squad of five resin terminators for the Night Lords, and these are like their Legion specific Terminator unit. So interesting, it's been a while since we've had a squad. I think the last squads were from the Dark Angel range uh, during 2020. So it's good to see these out. Obviously, releases are slow at the moment because of the general situation, but we did see Saul Targets a few weeks ago as well, you know, and, and good to see a new character model, particularly of someone like Saul. Anyway, enough preamble. What we're going to do in this video is I'm going to unbox a set of models. I'm going to show you the kit, have a look at the detail and the instructions, and just generally appraise the quality of the models included. I'd like to thank one of my viewers who has loaned me this kit for review. So yes, you know who you are. Thank you ever so much. I really do appreciate the loan. Right, without further ado, allow me to start unboxing it. So this comes in a medium sized white box. So this is larger than the smallest of them, which is half size. And we have one, two trays of parts. There you go, that's everything. And some other bits and bobs. So we shall put that in the background for, well, background. So we have two trays of parts, a set of five, 40 millimeter round plastic bases, a packing sheet and guide to building resin. And according to this, these were packed on the 25th of November. Gosh, so that's interesting. So these went on sale, uh, what is it today? Is it the 23rd of January? These arrived on the day of the release, which was the 22nd of January. So they've been packed up for nearly two months. Well, certainly these ones. I wonder why that is. Maybe they were just waiting for the right release moment. So as well as the miniatures and those bits, we also get the instructions. These are new style instructions. Um, CAD prints. Let's have a quick look at the models. As I said, there are five guys in this set. If you like the law, have a pause and have a read. So we have an exploded diagram of all the kit components. In terms of options in this set, I believe you get a spare head. There you go. So number, part number 39 is an unhelmeted head. And then you get one alternate weapon as well. So you can see there are five chain blades. But there's also this piece here, which is part 36. And that is none other than the Eschaton Power Claw, which is a very interesting and cool weapon. So we have instructions to build like so. These are obviously new generation models. I have recently assembled some of these newer Terminator models and this is a squad of Dark Angel Cenobites, which is a part of a commission I've been working on. Yeah. So I'm expecting that these kits will be designed in the same sort of way as those models. And that kit there went together very well. It was a real joy to build. So without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at these parts. So I have a couple of pieces of foam separating some of the delicate parts and then uh, these bits here. So let's start off. We have, we have legs, we have heads, we have a variety of arms. And then some more arms, right? So it looks like we've got legs and arms. Let's start with these legs. 
So the Conteca are wearing Tartaros pattern Terminator armor, as you can see. And they've got lots of Night Lord-esque details on them. So whenever we think of Night Lords and their, you know, Legion-specific details, we are thinking about skulls, we are thinking about bat wings, uh, chains, and of course, flayed skin. You know, they are, they do have a penchant for flayed skin. And the model designer took the decision, or not designers, because we don't know how many people are involved in designing these, to give the Conteca plenty of these details, as opposed to maybe having something that was more plain. And I'll share a few thoughts on that as we move through the review. So in terms of the casts on these, I mean, as you can see, they're very finely detailed, as you would expect of Forge World models. Lovely clean casts, these are very dry. And in terms of the casting quality, uh, they also look very good. Just a little bit of a seam to take away here. It's actually be smooth like that, but it's, uh, it's not too bad. Bit of cleanup down here. All right, what do we have here? We have the Eschaton Power Claw. Now, this is a great weapon. It is It combines the characteristics of a Power Fist and the Lightning Claw. So in effect, it is a rending Power Fist. Uh, not rending, sorry. You can see I'm not gamed in a while because of the lockdown. It is a Power Fist with Shred. And it's beautifully detailled. Fans of Legio 8's great grudge match against the Dark Angels will appreciate the helmet of a Dark Angels companion, which this guy has seized and is regarding probably with mocking contempt, which is, uh, I think, probably one of their favorite emotional states of being for the Conteca. So yes, very nice, lovely detail. We have a heavy flamer. We have the hand section of a Nostraman power glaive. Lots and lots of change. There's a shim to remove there. But they look really nice. Uh, really nice cast and lots of detailing. Now, I guess there's a question here as to whether or not do you want lots of detailing on a set of models like this? So all the chains, the flayed skin, the skulls. I don't know. It's a difficult one to answer that. I would probably say, given these are a Legion-specific Terminator unit, it's really nice, lovely. A little uh, stabby accessory on the Heavy Flamer there, by the way. Very nice to cast as well. Dry, nice and dry, not, not slimy. It's better to put the detail on than not, because to model stuff like all these, you know, all the flayed skin and stuff. It, actually, it takes a lot of time and effort for a modeler to do. So I think there's a fair good argument to lavish them with those sorts of details rather than not. And then if you don't like it, you can cut it away. You know, I do, I do quite a lot of converting work on heresy models and I would rather it come with it than without because it's easier to take it away than add it, I often think. So some nice stud details on this guy. Like these sharp flanges. That's a good phrase, isn't it? Sharp flange. A variety of what I can only assume to be butchering tools. So yeah, there's your daily grim dark. Yeah, very good. What else we got in here? We've got ah. So we have another hand section of an Australian chain glaive. But here we have the weapon that I'm sure a lot of people will be excited for, a new Volkite weapon, the Volkite Cavitator. You can only imagine what it might be cavitating. If you've read Vengeful Spirit, I think it was Vengeful Spirit. It's one where Horus goes to Moloch, the Horus Heresy novel. You might appreciate the Cavitator reference somewhat. Anyway, it, really cool. I, you know me, I'm a big fan of Volkite weapons, but it's a great looking thing. This thing is the twin barreled son of shotgun variant of the Volkite Culverin. So it packs all the firepower with a teensy weensy range. Perfect for Terminator squad. So, so these, these guys are going to really have a lot of punch 
We have a couple of helmets. So we have a bat winged helm here. And we have, this is a bear head helm here. Quite a creepy looking pair of individuals, which I suppose is part and parcel for the course with Night Lords. They're not nice to the Night Lords. They are not a legion to invite round for Sunday dinner with your parents. No, they, they are not nice. There's some debate as to whether or not these guys are part of the well-known Atramentar. Now, I believe on the Warhammer community website when they previewed these, they alluded to the fact that they are found, in effect, within the Atramentar. I think they've done a wise thing here in not completely nailing down what the concept of Atramentar Terminator Elite Bodyguard are. Just the same thing that as was done in the early days of a heresy with the Gorgon Terminators. Of course, with the Gorgon Terminators, they are a group within the Morlocks, but they are not the Morlocks as a whole. Uh, and I see these guys from a law standpoint in a similar manner. So moving on to tray number two, we have more legs and we have torsos and shoulders. So let's crack into these or onto these. So set of legs number four. Got a, a bit of a noticeable mold displacement here to remove. So there is, uh, there is a bit to do there. Personally, uh, that would moth fine for me. So no big worry there. More unpleasant looking scalping tools and flayed skin. All the classic design cues of Tartros plate Terminator armor as well. And then here we have the fifth set of legs. Very nice. You know, they've all got the same, they all got the same shape of attachment point. With the Cenobites I showed you earlier, they had a variety of different amounting point configurations or geometries. So you could kind of, it helped you locate which torso is supposed to go over which legs. Now obviously you can convert them, but they are designed to go in together in one way if you choose to do so. Let's do some torsos now. Another interesting thing with these is just thinking about whether or not they conform to the, the pattern of construction that the plastic Tartros Terminators do and earlier Tartros Terminators, which like this guy here. So this is uh, one of my word bearer serrated sunforce, which I'm working on. I mean, these sadly are out of production now, but it seems like these new ones are also following the same pattern in having a fully detached arm and a separate shoulder pauldron. So yeah, right, anyway. I'm going a little bit whimsical off track there. So we have skulls, we have teeth, or maybe bones. So suitably macabre torsos. More. I wonder what these notes are for, or the significance of the notes on Night Lords. I mean, obviously, these like prayer papers or, well, oaths of moment, I should say. Uh, prayer papers will be word bearers, have different significances on uh, or different meanings on different legions. So I wonder what these ones mean to the Night Lords. So yes, answers in the comments, please, if you know. And then we have some set of, I don't know, some tools. I don't fancy ever being uh, receiving treatment from those all right what else do we have i think we will take the standard approach and we'll finish on some weapons we have another set of heads so there are four different helms here and well, actually sorry they are not different helms four helms they all look of a similar design to me i think they're all the same these are, what are these? These are the tops of the torsos. So they've got all sorts of, we've got a variety of spiky adornments, which have been um, 
decorated with the uh, well schools, limbs, schools, and more schools of their many victims. Yes, very nice. Not much to comment on really here with the casting quality so far, other than to say it's generally been very good indeed. We now have two sets of shoulder pauldrons or shoulder pads. Oh yeah, okay, so those are like rings hanging off the off the jaws of those skulls. So those are suitably spooky. I suspect they will be compatible with other Terminator models wearing a Tartros armor. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Ooh, just in shot. And then the other side, we've gone for full on spooky boy. So these all look the same. Yeah. So they're not quite so individualistic as, say, the companion squad, which came uh, for the Dark Angels. Those are every single model there has different heraldry so these are all the same but of course the individuality of these models rests in the adornments if you can call it that their war trophies on their armor right let's finish with things that are stabby here we have the blades for the nostrum and power glaze which is intended i guess as a main weapon option for this squad this is a squad doesn't have a lot of weapon options you can take the Volkite Cavitators, the Dissident, the leader, can take the Eschaton Power Claw. But that's about it. There's not a great deal of option. But that's fine because these things are really groovy. <laughs> very, very cool. I think these are shims here that you need to remove. Let's have a look at the picture of the completed models. Um... Yeah, so you can see here, that's a shim you have to remove. And they, they'll put that in to get better casting quality, which has been generally achieved. There's a, a bit of cleanup to do here with a bit of a displacement. Uh, there's an air bubble that needs filling there. But overall, those look really good. Interesting design with a separate blade to the arm, and I guess that's a, because of the complexity of the part. I would pin those for sure. Use a, a little small pin running into the blade to hold it secure. And then the final part of the kit. Which is, I believe, the Dissident's torso. Not 100% sure there, but it is another torso with lots of flayed skin. Yum, if you like that sort of thing. And the Nostrum and Power Glaive, which is a, obviously really, really quite fancy. And uh, we've got a lot of Night Lords paraphernalia to it, skulls and chains and what have you, and a rather vicious hook at the end. Now, of course, given that you have the Eschaton Power Claw, that could well end up being a spare weapon, which would be absolutely fantastic for conversions and kit bashers. But yeah, that's cool. Again, you've got some shims to remove on this weapon, some flash to take away as well. And some, there's a bit of a mold line to clean up on that, as you can see there. So yeah, but overall, in terms of casting quality, yeah, I'll be very happy if I'd bought this kit in terms of the cleanup that I'd need to do to get these ready for building. Yeah, I'll be very happy indeed. So there you have it, the Night Lords Contekar Terminator Elite Squad out of the box review. What do I think overall? So I think as a kit, I really like the look of them. I mean, I'm not a Night Lords player, so I'm kind of, I'm not invested in them from that point of view. But when I look at them as a general kit, they look really good. I can see the cross compatibility with existing Tartros models, which I like. There's a couple of spare weapons in there. Well, one spare weapon in the Dissident's melee weapon, which is good. I suppose you only get two Cavitators and three Heavy Flamers. Now, you know, you might want more Cavitators. Personally, uh, I think given that these only have a range of 10 inches, you could easily over firepower yourself if you put in more than two or three in a squad. With 
Terminator elites, a lot of their combat power sits in their melee capability. And if you put too much firepower, short range firepower, you can get yourself in that situation where you position yourself for a charge, you fire, and then you wipe out some of the enemy squad and then you fail your charge because of the distance you've opened between the two squads. So I think while it'd be nice to have more of those, I think it's probably about the right number, two or three in the squad. You could create more by using either Volkite Chargers or Volkite Calibers to convert them, I think. You could double stack either of those weapons. A bit like a Leviathan chest weapon style. I think you could do that to do some of uh, you know, your own homebrews on that if you wanted more Volkite Cavitators. So yeah, I, I think overall weapon choices, kit design looks great. The stances and the poses all look good. Casting quality overall here is really very good a couple of little bits of extra work on a couple of parts but overall quite happy to receive this and certainly yeah not a lot to do in terms of prep there and finally of course there's that question around how much night lords bling to put on lesser or more i think they've made the right choice with going with the more approach i would also observe that the way the these have been painted is very much in like the heavy metal style as opposed to the forge world style of painting. And because of that, they look really poppy. So they really, you know, they stand out and, you know, it, it's bright and it's eye-catching. Whereas forge world style of painting is less so. So my first observation on that is, until you've seen some of these painted by people who paint in the forge world style, don't judge your appearance because you don't actually know what they look like. And I suspect when done in that style, they're going to look very different indeed. And all the Night Lord's details will blend in and look a lot more menacing and less poppy. So yeah, just a final thought there on the aesthetics of this squad. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts. I hope you found this review interesting and insightful to listen to. Once again, thank you to the viewer who loaned me these for review purposes. It's very kind of you. I'm much obliged. As always, please do share your thoughts and observations on this new kit and indeed the Night Lords in general. What do you think of them? As always, I'll be interested to hear. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.